still watching this area, but as we go through the next half hour or so, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of development with the storms in this region. But as we talked about last week, a tornado and a land spout both can create a lot of damage depending on where they are. Winds are still very strong. We could see them up to 80 miles an hour at times, but at this point they have lifted the tornado warning here for DIA. So that's good news. At least we have improved the condition here, Jessica, at least with that, that situation moving across the eastern portion of the metro area. Yeah, Stacey, it's so quick that this weather uh, seems to change. It, were, it yes. seems like we were just doing this last Friday, another mm -hmm. tornado warning. This was in effect in Adams County. It still looks like that warning is in effect for until about 415 or so. They actually just oh, they just that. that just expired. Yeah. Um, and did that that warning come with any hail or any any possibility of that in the area? No, it looks like it was more of a land spout, okay. um, just like we saw last week when we had the chopper flying right over it. It looked more like a dust devil than it did an intense thunderstorm with that tornado coming down from the sky. We were looking out for land spouts over the last half hour or so because of the strong storms off to the west side of the metro. We have those strong winds coming down out of those storms and we kind of see what we call a convergence area um, from these strong storms as we go through the afternoon and we have a lot of heat to work with here for this area. So as we get the heat building and we get some strong downsloping winds here for the area. I pointed out this line here along E470. You can see that convergence zone where then we start to see rotation because you have those strong winds coming out of the mountains and then they run into air that's coming in from the east. And so they kind of crash into one another. And as that happens, you see the rotation starting to take place and we do get a land spout and then we get a tornado warning from the National Weather <laughs> Service because they do want to keep everybody on top of this situation to say, hey, you know, you need to watch out for something that is happening right now out at the airport. Now they did just lift that tornado warning here for the DIA area. So at this point, we're no longer under the tornado warning, uh, but we also have flash flood warnings off to our northwest. There are still some very strong thunderstorms here in that region. So and Stacy, I would imagine even though they've lifted the tornado warning, it's probably pretty windy and, and pretty stormy in the area as well. Well, it it looks like right now we have one cell that's just north of the airport. And as you can see, it fired up very quickly and then fell right apart wow. very quickly. So yes, probably still some gusty winds in the area. Um, but at this point, we still have cloudy skies across the region as we uh, move south toward Aurora. You can see there's a little line of showers right along E470 all the way down toward Parker into Sedalia and Castle Pines. Um, so we're watching these storms down to the south as well because we're really not out of the woods with the rotation that's been set up here with these storms that are developing right along this line here on the east side of the metro area. But Jessica, we literally were just talking about this exact <laughs> same thing a week ago. Yes. And here we are talking about it again. And same yes, time we of did. Day. Uh, see that tornado warning pop up. Well, good thing that storm looks like it has dissipated. Mm -hmm. And Stacy, thank you so much for being here and being on air to guide us through this. And for those of you just joining us, this is Denver 7 News at 4. We'll check back in with Stacy again in a few minutes and we'll look at those watches and warnings, but we've got some other things to tell you about today. It's been more than two years since the arrest of Karen Gardner was caught on camera and it's still tough to watch. Loveland officer Daria Jalali stood by and watched the assault and today she she was sentenced for her part in the crime. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta was in the courtroom when the decision came down. Jalali was sentenced to serve 45 consecutive days in jail. She was taken into custody inside of a courtroom. She's already served two of those days, so she'll go on to serve the remaining 43. But after that jail time, she does have to do three years of probation and some community service as well. And this was by no means a quick sentencing hearing. It went on for well over an hour and a half. We heard from Karen Gardner's son, her daughter and her daughter in law. We also heard from the defense, the prosecution and Jalali herself. The defense played a 12 minute long clip of body worn camera where you see Karen Gardner get stopped alongside the road. She gets pinned on a cop car and eventually put inside of that cop car as well. At the end of the hearing, we heard from the judge who for about 15 to 20 minutes basically reprimanded Jalali for her actions on that June 2020 day. 
We spoke to Gardner's family after about what the judge said, how they felt about that, and despite their believing justice had been served, what they didn't feel was in that courtroom this morning. You know, may not feel that she's as remorseful, but I think it's going to set in pretty quick. I had wrote out last night several times, failure, failure. She failed in every aspect of what she did. And that was one word that he said that I was like, that's exactly it. It sums up the whole thing. She failed. During our interview with Karen Garner's daughter-in-law, she also made it a very clear point that this isn't it for their family. They want to make sure that this never happens to anyone ever again. In Fort Collins, I'm Veronica Acosta, number seven. Veronica, thank you. Aurora police need your help as they try to identify the driver of a deadly hit and run overnight that killed a man and the two dogs that he was walking. The tragedy happened at a dangerous curve on Tower Road just south of Hampton. The Air Tracker 7 was overhead as police processed the crime scene. The hit and run driver ditched the SUV they were driving at the scene. Police are still trying to determine if it was the stolen vehicle. Those familiar with the area say it's an extremely dangerous stretch of roadway. It's horrible, especially if somebody just hit and run type of situation. That's, you know, so unacceptable. If you have any information about the hit and run driver, you're encouraged to call Aurora Police. Several college campuses on the front range either shut their doors completely today or place their buildings on lockout for what now appears to be a hoax. Nearly a dozen colleges and universities took precautions due to an undisclosed threat. A handful closed for the day. Others placed buildings on lockout, keeping students and staff safe inside. China is cutting off all talks with the U.S. on most big issues like climate change. It's a result of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan this week. China also took military action, firing missiles near Taiwan in response to this visit. Taiwan is self-governing, but China believes the island is Chinese territory. We turn to the news feed and it starts with what could come next for basketball star Brittany Griner. The Russian government says it is open to talking about a prisoner exchange for her. A Russian court sentenced Griner to nine years in prison yesterday on drug possession charges. Russia did warn against the U.S. publicizing this issue moving forward. The Biden administration has declared monkeypox a public health emergency. There are now more than 6,600 cases nationwide. Now, with this title, there can be more access to emergency money to help get treatment and vaccines to more people. Well, buckle up for what could be a tough flu season this year. The flu now surging in Australia for the first time since the start of the pandemic. And that can be an indication for what's to come here. Most babies will develop jaundice after they leave the hospital. And in most cases, it does clear up on its own. But sometimes it can lead to a lifelong brain disease called kernicterus although that is very rare. The American Academy of Pediatrics is now updating its guidelines on jaundice testing to further prevent it. It is the first major change since 2004 in response to new research published by the AAP today. Some of the things that we've learned is that it's really a good idea to uh, measure the bilirubin level before a baby um, gets discharged from the newborn nursery. Billy Rubin is the byproduct that's created when our blood breaks down and babies' livers can have a tough time filtering it out, which is what causes jaundice and kernicterus. Now, the good news is this new research is that doctors found higher levels of bilirubin are needed to cause the brain disease than previously thought, and doctors say allowing this will allow them to give parents more clear recommendations on follow-up testing and treatment. Now, that can include light therapy and blood transfusions. There is a way to prevent bilirubin levels from getting too high in the first place. One of the most important things is um, uh, adequate feeding and making sure that we're um, supporting uh, uh, breastfeeding mothers. Having a baby is a really wonderful time, and, and I don't mean to, to scare families about the risk, um, but this is just one of the things that they really want to pay attention to. You can learn more about the new guidelines at aap.org. The LGBTQ community has historically faced barriers to health care. Almost half haven't come out to their provider. Now there's a new push to break down those walls when it comes to Alzheimer's treatment. 
In just a few minutes, Stacy will be back with another look at our unsettled weather. And if you like flowers, we'll tell you how you can help decide which ones will head to stores in the future.